Greetings in the name of Jesus. We welcome all Facebook uh, friends uh, for uh, joining us tonight, and we welcome all Kingdom Faith Church World Evangelism members. We pray that uh, you're having a wonderful night. I want you to sit back and relax, get some, get a drink or something, and just chillax. Now don't watch me in the bedroom. You'll probably fall asleep, uh, so don't do that. Amen. But uh, we're going to get into our Bible study tonight. We're going to preach on uh, or teach on the subject of Hades. This is part three. Amen. And so if you want to know what happened in part one, if you want to know what happened in part two, just uh, go there on our, our Facebook uh, account and then just go back and you the video should be there for you to view. So thank you again for joining us. I believe that you're going to be blessed tonight. Uh, this word uh, that I have for you tonight is, is incredible and it's going to open your understanding. The book of Hosea says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And the truth is that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. And he does kill and steal and destroy because we have a lack of knowledge on how he operates. Amen. So the whole idea is to... Be filled with the Holy Spirit, walk with Jesus to the best of your ability, and then open your heart to His Word and, and study and, and, and search and test and do all these things that are necessary so that you can grow in the knowledge of the Lord. That way the enemy won't come uh, into your home, into your family, into your ministry to kill, steal, and to destroy. So we're going to do part three on... Hades, the realm of the dead. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 16, uh, he said to Peter, I tell you the truth, Peter. He said that on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. We asked the question, why did Jesus use Hades, the ancient, ancient Greek God, uh, you know, of the Greeks? Well, why did he use that? Uh, name and not I will build my church and the gates of Satan shall not prevail against it. Amen. He said the gates of Hades because Jesus was trying to bring understanding to his disciples. That's what every good teacher tries to do. Bring understanding to his disciples. So he uses the word Hades and the disciples were very familiar with all these Greek gods that the Romans worshipped. They knew very well when Jesus said, uh, the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. They understood, right? Oh, that's the uh, Hades is the uh, Roman God, uh, uh, you know, that the Romans worship, or the ancient Greek God that the Romans worship. And I believe that uh, after Jesus made this statement, I believe that, uh, you know, they uh, took some time uh, you know, uh, out or something, and one of them said, Jesus, can you explain to us why you use the word Hades and not uh, Satan or the devil? And Jesus said, because Hades is, uh, the, the, the Greeks believe, and the Romans also, believe that Hades was the god of the underworld. In other words, uh, the God of the realm of the dead. And that's what the word means. The word Hades means the underworld, a place of departed spirits, the realm of the dead. Hades is the ancient Greek God uh, of the underworld. Now, when you look up the word realm, right, the word realm in English means an area of domain, thought, and knowledge. So what Jesus was trying to convey to his disciples is, look, you're not only fighting against uh, Satan and his cronies, but you're also going to fight against uh, spirits of people. People that have died, have not uh, entered into the presence of Father, and they have entered the realm of Hades, the realm of the dead, he said, and you need to understand this. Now, Hades is mentioned uh, about 11 times in the New Testament, so... You know, that's a lot of scriptures, right? About 11, at least 11. Uh, so Hades is, is, is something that is uh, very real. It, not that, uh, that uh, Hades, the, uh, the god of the Greeks, was real, but what he represented is very real, and that is the god of the underworld. Amen? Or the 
the place where people who are not saved, they die and they enter into Hades. Uh, many people believe that uh, when you die, you, you know, without the Lord, without salvation, you enter hell. And there the demons and the devil, you know, uh, torment you, right? And all that in the fire. And then others believe that uh, you, you go into purgatory and then from there they can pray you up to heaven. And then some believe that, you know what, you die and then there's nothing. Amen. Well, we don't want to be in any of those three. We want to be the, 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 the group of people that understood why Jesus used the word Hades. Amen. In other words, we must be careful and we must allow the Holy Spirit to teach us because there's a realm of the dead, not only a realm of demons and demonic powers, etc., but a realm of the dead, people who have died without the Lord and went into the realm of the dead. And guess what? Jesus said though, though that realm, Jesus said the gates of Hades shall not prevail against the church. Jesus used the word Hades to give his disciples revelation and understanding about the kingdom of Satan. Amen. Uh, point number two, this is from last week. If the dead are not able to communicate with the living, and a lot of people believe that, that the, once the dead die, you know, you don't have to worry about them, about them. If the dead are not able to communicate with the living, then we said God must be lying. And we know God is not lying because the devil is the father of lies, not, not God. Amen. How do we know that uh, you can or that the Bible teaches that you can communicate with the dead? Deuteronomy 18 verse 11. Do not let anyone to try to control others with magic. Do not let them be mediums or try to talk with the spirits of dead people. This is what God said to Moses. Amen. And so, you know, who are you going to believe? The traditions of men or what Heavenly Father stated in the book of Deuteronomy? And a lot of people believe that, you know, that, that you know, those who believe that there's nothing, you die and, and that's it. You know, you don't have to worry about the dead bothering you or attacking you or any such thing is because they read Ecclesiastics chapter 9. They, uh, and it says, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Their love, their hatred, and their envy have now perished. Nevermore will they have any share in anything under the sun. And people read that and will see we don't have to worry about the dead. Well, Solomon wrote Ecclesiastics. He had all wisdom, and Jesus even attested to this, but he didn't have all revelation. Amen? He had all wisdom, but he didn't have all revelation. Jesus is full of wisdom and revelation because he is the lamb in the book of Revelation that uh, uh, John saw with seven eyes and seven horns, which represents authority and perfect vision. So amen or perfect revelation. Amen. So point number two, if the dead are not able to communicate with the living, then God is lying. And we know that God is not lying. No, the traditions of men are lying all right so now let's go into part three and i'm going to talk about a specific mountain tonight uh, uh amen and about mountains amen let me read you some scripture isaiah 2 in the last days the mountain of the lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it amen that's isaiah 2 now let's read Jeremiah, Jeremiah 3. The Lord said unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Have you seen that which have you seen that which backsliding Israel has done? Yahweh speaking to Jeremiah. She, which is Israel, she has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree, and there has played the harlot. In other words, what God was saying is that uh, Israel began to mingle with other gods, other, other authorities, other powers, and she began to play the harlot. Amen? So point number one in part three. Mountains in the Holy Scripture represent either holy or demonic powers or authorities. You must get this from the very beginning. Mountains in the Holy Scripture represent either holy or demonic great powers 
of authority. In Isaiah, the mountain uh, of the Lord, of course, represents his holiness. In Jeremiah, the mountains of devils represents, of course, uh, evil powers. Amen? Let us continue. Now, there are several uh, mention of a lot of mountains in the Bible, and we're going to bring up only a few this, this afternoon, this evening. Amen? Uh, you have uh, in, uh, in Genesis chapter 8, the Bible says, And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventh day of the seventh month, upon the mountain of Ar Arab. Okay, so you have that. You have the mountain called Moriah, Genesis 22. And God said, Take thy only son, Isaac, whom you love, and get him into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountain which I shall tell thee. So here we read of Mount Moriah. That's where God said, Take uh, your son and sacrifice him unto me. Amen. Another famous mountain is Mount Horeb, uh, is also called uh, Mount Sinai. Exodus 3, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he let, he let the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to uh, Horeb. So here you have another famous mountain. Amen. One more or two more. Mount Carmel is another famous mountain. Uh, in 1 Kings verse 18, uh, chapter 18, excuse me. Elijah defeats all the prophets of Baal, and it's in Mount Carmel. Very, very beautiful story. If you have time to read that, 1 Kings chapter 18. Uh, Mount Nebo is another mountain. Amen. Mount Nebo is where, uh, you remember Moses uh, disobeyed the Lord, and God said, you're not going into the promised land here. You're going to see it, but you're not going. And the Bible says that Moses died on Mount Nebo. That's also a very famous mountain. Amen. So there's many mountains in the scripture. There are uh, some mountains that are very important and some of them don't have any names. Amen. But all these mountains that I just mentioned would probably fall under the category of being holy because God chose them for a specific purpose. Amen. So remember, Jesus uh, uh, takes the uh, his disciples he tells him, you know, he, he, he takes him to uh, Caesarea Philippi. Uh, Bible scholars say that, uh, that he only went there one time in his whole ministry. They say one time he visited Caesarea Philippi, uh, Caesarea Philippi. Amen. And there, when he goes to the region of Caesarea Philippi, is where he says to Peter, uh, there's a big mountain there. Amen. And the mountain that is there is called uh, Hebron. Amen. Mount Hebron. So what happens is that uh, Jesus, who is led by the Holy Spirit, he says in the book of John, I don't do anything if I don't see the Father showing it to me or if I don't hear the Father uh, speaking it to me. So here uh, Jesus has been moved by the Holy Spirit. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly where he's going. The Father leads them to this big mountain, this mountain uh, called Hebron. Uh, I mean, excuse me. So, Matthew, Matthew 16. And I tell you that if you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. He tells them that. In the region of uh, Caesarea Philippi, there was the Greeks and Romans there in that mountain, they built about 30 temples to false gods. The Greeks and Romans believed that Mount Hermon was a portal to the underworld. Amen. So Jesus understood that and he knew this. Amen. So he's led by the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, according to Bible scholars, he, he, only there, he went there only one time. So Jesus knows exactly all these false gods, you know, and he understands that all these behind every false god is a demonic power. He understood that. So he is led by the Holy Spirit uh, to Caesarea Philippi there in that region. And that's where uh, Mount Hermon is. And there at, uh, at that mountain, the Romans believed that there was a sacred mountain for their gods. They believed that Mount Hermon uh, uh, Hermon 
was a mountain where there was a portal. They erected over 30 temples to false god in that mountain. Amen? And I say portal uh, because that means a gateway or a, or a door. Uh, when uh, we were in India uh, and we were ministering up in the, the mountains of, uh, of India, I remember that the minister who was with me and, and, and you know, we were there in the, in the car and we were, it was a full moon. And I said to the, to the minister there with me, wow, man, look at, the, look at them clouds. It's, gonna, it's probably going to rain. It looks pretty. Those clouds look pretty dark. And another minister from there, from that area, said, uh, she said, pastors, the, uh, the, the, the sky is as clear as possible. And I understood, whoa, wait a minute, what just happened? I saw a portal. That's what I saw, a portal, a spiritual opening, a portal where demons ascend and descend. Amen? And that's what uh, this mountain, uh, Hermon, was uh, all about. The, the, the Romans believed that it was sacred, not wholly sacred to them, uh, because uh, they erected over 30 temples, uh, and they believed there was a portal there. So think about it. Jesus then is led by the Holy Spirit, and they do the, 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 the travel to Caesarea Philippi, and there, whether they spent uh, two weeks in that area, we don't know, but they spent some time. And what happens? Jesus said this to his disciples. Hey, who do people say that I am? And his disciples said, well, some say you're John the Baptist, and some say you're Elijah, etc., etc. And then Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's in that place, in that mountain, right there, Mount, Mount Hermon, there where this portal was, Amen. This portal of evil, this entrance, this gateway of evil, right there, Jesus says to Peter, Peter, let me tell you that flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And that's when Jesus says uh, the famous phrase, I will build my church and the gates of Hades. And I'm sure that he pointed to the mountain there. We're not told in the scripture that he pointed, but I'm sure he pointed to that mountain. That's where they were. That was the highest mountain in all Israel. Amen. Uh, so he says to Peter and his disciples, I will build my church and the gates of hell, the gates, excuse me, of Hades shall not prevail against it. Wow. So Jesus takes them to this mountain. Talk about being on the offense. Amen. Talk about being on the offense. We Christians Many times don't want to be on the offense. I know that I'm one of them because the Lord said to me one time, I want you to pray this prayer. And I said, uh, Holy Spirit, if I pray that prayer, I'm going to stir up, you know, a lot of devils. And he said, exactly, that's what I want you to do. And I don't want to stir up any devils. Amen. But here Jesus is on the offensive, not on the defensive. He goes to that uh, sacred, unholy place of the devil. He goes to that mountain, uh, uh, Mount Hermon, uh, that uh, Romans and the Greeks worship. You know, he said, let, when the Holy Spirit led him to go over there, I knew Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. And there is where um, he reveals to his disciples, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, this big mountain, and it was the highest mountain uh, in Israel, uh, 1.7 miles, I believe, high it is, right? And he pointed to that mountain, this, he, you know, in, in the gospel according to Bishop, he said to them, I'm telling you, I'm going to build my church and the gates of this portal, the gates of Hades, the gates of, the gates of this evil mountain, he said, shall not prevail against the church. Amen. So Jesus gave the apostle Peter a prophetic word that the gates of Hades would not prevail against the church. Where? In the very same area where the Greeks and the Romans believed Hades existed. Mount Hebron. Amen. Mount Hebron. So, and so so you and I must understand that 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 Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. 
He knew exactly where he was going. He was led by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? In Matthew 4, you remember the temptation. In Matthew 4, he's tempted three times. In Matthew 4, the, the Bible says that the devil took the Lord Jesus to a great and high mountain, Mount Hermon, and there tempted him with all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Where did the devil take him? And we, we, we taught on this some time ago. We taught when we were teaching on dreams. We taught that Jesus was dreaming, or else if he wasn't dreaming, then he would have never allowed the devil to take him to a high mountain. He knew it. He, he would have known it was the devil, but he was being deceived. Now, after the devil tempts him, he says, if you worship me, after he takes him to this high mountain, if you worship me, he said, uh, then, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'll give you all this. And Jesus, that's when Jesus said, uh, no, uh, I resist you. Get away. Don't uh, Get behind me, Satan. Only God shall you serve. Amen. So we understand that. Amen. So point number three. According to historians, Mount Hermon, which is 1.7 miles high, is in Caesarea Philippi. About 30 temples have been erected to false gods there. On that mountain, Jesus declared that the gates of Hades would not prevail against the church. Hallelujah. Amen. What are we talking about? We're talking about the realm of the dead. Not only do we have to worry about the Satan, the devil, the serpent, the dragon, but we also, uh, and, and his cronies, all his demons and devils, but we also need to worry about the spirits of dead people. Amen. Let me tell you what happened to me some time ago. I think this was back in 2018. I, I don't remember uh, when it was, but I know it, I think 2018 or maybe the beginning of 2019. I, I don't remember. But I was dreaming, amen, and we've taught on dreams. I was dreaming, right, that this friend of mine wanted to talk to me in this dream. Now, what's so crazy about this is that this friend of mine had already been dead for about a year or maybe a little bit less, I don't remember. But he had already been dead. And in the dream, you know, he, uh, he knocked on the, on the door of my house and I opened the door. And I said in the dream, uh, what are you doing here? You know, because I knew that he was dead. He said, well, I, I, I've come to talk to you. And I said, no, and I stepped back and I pointed at him, you know, through the door, which is the portal or a spiritual opening or the spiritual realm. And I pointed at him and I said, I do not talk to the dead. And then I said, anyway, when before you died, I said, many times I tried to bring you into the church. Many times I talked to you about the gospel. And what did you do? You rejected me. Oh, wow. I said, away from me. Away from me, you foul spirit in the name of Jesus. See, that's Hades. He went into the realm of the dead. Amen. And what did he want me to do? Well, he wanted to say something to me so that I could contact his family and say and give them the message I said oh no sir we're not doing that amen we're not doing that in Jesus name so that's what we're talking about and that's what you must be aware of you that's why you must understand this amen when you have dreams of relatives you have dreams of people you know you have dreams you know of family members and you go my god I dreamt so and so and they were saying this to me well you got to be careful amen you got to be careful uh, because if you wake up, let's say you, you are dreaming and you're talking to a dead relative who is in Hades and you wake up from that dream and you go, oh my God, that, uh, I know that, you know, the relative that I dreamed about wasn't walking with the Lord. Yeah, you know, I know they were not. So then you just pray automatically right there. Father, in Jesus' name, guard me from the spirits of the dead. Guard my mind and guard my heart and give me the discernment and the understanding that I need so that if it comes to me again, I will not fall under the temptation of speaking to it or under the trap of communicating with it. 
And that's it. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you ask God to forgive you and help you, and He will. Amen. But that's what we are talking about. You know, uh, like I said, there are so many people who believe that the dead who die without Jesus are in some part of the earth, you know, being tortured with pinchforks and, and the hells of fire. Well, wouldn't that be wonderful if that's where they were? Amen. Or they're in purgatory and then you pray them over, you know, they go to heaven. Well, that'd be wonderful. Or they don't even exist anymore until Judgment Day. Well, wouldn't that be great? You don't have to worry about them anymore. But that is not what it's all about. That's why Jesus used the word Hades. Amen. That's why he used the Greek God, Hades, the realm of the dead, the God of the underworld. And remember what we said before. Satan, uh, Jesus said, if I'm casting demons in the name of Beelzebub, which is the prince of demons, he said, how can Satan's kingdom stand if it's divided? See, right there we are told by the Lord Jesus Christ, wow, that there is order. There are rules and regulations and order must be followed. There's not chaos in the kingdom of darkness. There's no chaos. There is order, just like there's order in the kingdom of God. And then Paul tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, we find out against principalities, against uh, powers, against rulers of darkness, against uh, wickedness in heavenly places. Amen. So he gives you these levels of demonic activity. Amen. From the very highest to the very lowest. And that's what we are trying to get you to understand through the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember what Hosea says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Amen. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. No, let us uh, learn the word. Let us be open to the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that we will have the victory not only over Satan and uh, the devil, the serpent and the dragon, over demons and devils, and not only that, over every spirit that is in the realm of the dead. Amen. So Jesus takes the fight uh, to to this to this this principality there. Amen. I bet you that Jesus understood that that power that was there uh, and, the, and that mountain, Mount Hermon, I, I bet you that what uh, uh, he understood that that power was over Israel. I bet you he understood that that was a powerful, powerful power of demonic activity, the realm of the dead, devils, demons, everything. And that's why Jesus goes there and he picks the place of sake uh, that, that picks that mountain that is sacred to the evil people sacred to them not to us not to the holy people but sacred to them uh they say that like i said earlier they had erected 30 temples to false gods there and, and uh, uh do some research man i found a bunch of stuff but you know you can't talk about everything in a 40 minute sermon amen but Jesus understood that. He understood that's what needed to be broken. Amen. Basically, what Jesus was saying is that uh, there uh, in, uh, in Mount Hermon, uh, the, that was probably the mountain of the devil. There was, that was the porter into all the spiritual uh, evil and the principalities and powers and all that stuff would flow through there, through that opening in the spirit. And Jesus went over there and he confronted it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, I tell you in Matthew 16, I tell you, you are Peter and on this rock, that word rock means massive rock, which was a big mountain. I will build my church in the gates of Hades. The realm of the dead shall not prevail against the church. Amen. Oh, blessed be, blessed be the Lord. So what do we see then? Also that he, the that's where the devil took Jesus to a high mountain to tempt him. And Jesus said, no, I'm not going to fall to your temptation. Amen. Well, a few days later, after that, then this happens. Amen. Let us read. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brought them up to a high mountain. The same mountain that 
he where he told Peter uh, uh, the gates of Hades shall not prevail against the church. Amen. So uh, the Bible says that he took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brought them to a high mountain, Mount, Mount Hermon, alone. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone as the sun. His garments became white as light. And suddenly, oh wow, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Wow, I skipped a lot of scripture here. Elijah and Moses appear with Jesus in this transfiguration. Where? in the same mountain, in the same place that, uh, that the Romans and the Greek worship all these false gods, amen? Mount Hermon, there in that mountain, that's where uh, Jesus transfigured, amen? Before Peter, James, and John, Elijah and Moses appear talking to him about, what, about his departure, uh, the Bible says, so talking basically, talking to him about what was going to happen, you know, when he went to Jerusalem, crucified, and then the third day resurrected. Amen? So there, uh, while, while Peter and James and John are, 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 you know, are freaking out, you know, the Bible says that a cloud overshadowed them, and then the cloud, then a voice came from the cloud, and this is what God said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased listen to him hallelujah amen there's another place where a voice said the same thing jesus was being baptized in matthew chapter 3 the bible says and when he came out of the water the heavens were open and a voice came and the voice said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased now who heard that in matthew chapter 3 only two people heard that voice john the baptist and Jesus of Nazareth. Only them two. Nobody else heard the voice. Amen. But now in Matthew 17, amen, who hears the voice? Who hears the phrase? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Well, Moses heard it. Elijah heard it. Peter heard it. James heard it. And John. Amen. Now you have more witnesses hearing the voice of God that Jesus, that this was his beloved son in whom he was well pleased. Hallelujah. And where did God say it? Right there in the mountain of the devil. Right there in the mountain uh, where they would sacrifice and worship uh, and do detestable things uh, to their gods. I'm telling you, I read some stuff about some of the things that they did in, in, in some of the temples that they erected to these false gods. My God, I wouldn't even want to talk about that. You know, with anybody, I, you, my God, that's gross. It was just perversion. Amen. It was just pure perversion. And right there in that mountain, hallelujah, Mount Hermon, right there, God says, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. And five people heard the voice and five people knew that Jesus was the son of God. Amen. The son of the living God, hallelujah, amen, amen. and it witnessed to Peter, and it witnessed to James, and it witnessed to John, uh, because that's what they had heard earlier, when Peter said, uh, you're the Christ, the son of the living God, hallelujah, amen, Jesus said, the flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father who is in heaven, amen, so we see then that, uh, uh, let me read point number four. So we see that Jesus also transfigured before Peter, James, and John on Mount Hermon. Uh, our Heavenly Father declared with His heavenly hosts, Elijah and Moses, to Peter, James, and John on the top of Satan's mountain that Jesus was His beloved Son, the Christ of God, the Christ of the living God, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Hallelujah. Amen. Whoa, I hope this is blessing you, amen. I hope this is stirring you, amen. I hope you're understanding, amen, that Jesus said to his disciples, uh, and, and, and Luke, I believe, I give you authority to trample upon 
uh, scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. That means demons. That means devils, unclean spirits, the devil, the serpent, the dragon, Satan, and every person who has died without the salvation of the Lord and entered into the realm of the dead, including them. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. You say, well, Bishop, I don't know. I, I get scared sometimes. Well, if you're going to do it in your power, yeah, I would get scared too. We're not doing it in our power. Amen. The Old Testament teaches that the battle's the Lord's. Amen. Not ours. The battle's is the Lord. All we do is trust in Him that He's going to defend us. All we do is trust in Him that He's going to keep us. All we do is trust in Him because we're no, we're no uh, uh, threat. We, we don't, we're not strong enough to these powers. They're too powerful. These demonic spirits don't eat. They don't sleep. They don't get tired. They don't wake up with their bones hurting. They don't wake up with sinuses. They don't wake up with headaches. They don't go on vacation. They're, they don't do anything because they don't have a physical body. Their spirit and all they do is wait and wait and wait until one of God's people or any person opens the door and then they, they flow through that thought, through that uh, thought into people's uh, minds. And then, of course, the person ends up doing what exactly they wanted them to do. Amen. No, me and you, uh, Paul said, we are more than conquerors through who? Through who? Through who? Through who? Through Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And he said in, in, the, in Philippians, uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's what I want you to understand. You know, I was in prayer one time and uh, the powers that be were very upset with me. And one of them manifested right on top of the church. And it said to me, you know, it said to me, I'm in prayer. He said to me, you know that I can squash you like an ant. I said, yeah, I'm sure you can squash me like an ant, but you're not. Oh, hallelujah. I said, but you're not in the name of Jesus. You're not going to squash me like an ant because that has not been given to you to do that to me by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So, no, we're not strong enough. No, we're not smart enough. No, but we do have the Holy Spirit and we must rely on Him and believe that it is through Him, in Him, through Him, we do all these things. Amen? Hallelujah. So, Jesus transfigured before Peter, James, and John on, the Mount, on Mount Hermon. Our Heavenly Father declared with His heavenly host, Elijah and Moses, he declared to Peter, James, and John on top of Satan's mountain, on top of the stronghold, on top of that portal of evil, that kingdom of evil. Remember, mountains represent either holy or unholy things, authorities or unholy authorities or holy authorities. And there, on top of Satan's mountain, uh, Father declared that Jesus was his beloved son. Amen. So what happened? Point number five. After the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, He resurrected from the dead. You know that He was uh, tried, uh, He was crucified, and on the third day He rose from the dead. After the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only mountain, remember we started part three with mountains. Some are evil and some are holy. Amen. And we talked about several mountains on point number two that were holy. Amen. After the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only mountain that will cover the whole earth will be the mountain of the Lord. Hallelujah. And what does that represent? His authority. Amen. When uh, uh, Gabriel comes to Mary, Mary says, you're going to, Gabriel says to Mary, you're going to have a baby and you know the story. Uh, Gabriel said, by the way, of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Oh, hallelujah. He said, there shall be no end. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Um, let me read you Zechariah chapter 8. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion, a mountain, and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, 
the holy mountain. Hallelujah. The holy mountain. Habakkuk chapter 2. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. As the waters cover the sea. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Micah chapter 4. Then it will be that in the latter days, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as head of all the mountains. Hallelujah. And the mountain of the Lord will be lifted above all the hills and people will stream to it. And many nations will come and say, Come, that we might go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of our God. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Old Testament is full of mountains, uh, uh, full of symbolism uh, that God speaks to His people and He says, My mountain, my holy mountain represents His kingdom, His authority. Amen. And now let us go to the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. Are you ready for this? Oh, hallelujah. Revelation 21. John says, And the angel carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation 21. And he carries him away to a great and high mountain. And he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I remember that when I was, uh, I had been saved only a few years uh, a prophet came to our church there where I attended and he gave me a prophecy. You know, I, I knew nothing about anything. I was greener than the, than the color green in, 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 in the area of God and the Bible and all these things. I, I knew nothing. And he said to me, uh, brother, he says, I see you climbing the mountain of the Lord and I see you going higher and higher and higher. You know, I said, well, bless the Lord. So I thought, well, what mountain is that? I've never heard of the mountain of the Lord. So I thought, you know what? Let me talk to the preacher. The, uh, the prophet was a, a visiting minister. So I talked to the preacher after the service and I said, oh, what did my prophecy mean? You know, the, he saw me climbing the mountain of the Lord and going higher and higher. He said the mountain of the Lord just basically means his kingdom, his authority, his power, and that you were going to climb and climb and climb. He said, well, blessed be the name of Jesus. I said, I am ready. That's, that was a long time ago. Amen. Wow. I can't remember. I remembered that prophecy. So, amen. So, Revelation chapter 21, at the end of all the judgments, all the hell is broken loose. You know, God is making a new earth and the new heavens. This is what John saw. He said, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down of, out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So I hope and pray that you have been blessed with these three teachings on Hades, the realm of the dead. Amen. Go back and listen to one. You have my notes? Go back and study it. You know, uh, don't do what's, what some people actually do. Well, I've heard that before. Well, the question is, if you heard it before, are you walking in it? Well, no, I'm not walking in it. Then you haven't heard it. You know, it hasn't settled in. You know, if you heard it one ear, went out the other. No, go back and study it. Go back and read it. Go back and understand it. Amen. And be as Timothy, as Paul said to Timothy, the study to show thyself approved, a workman that not be ashamed, uh, easily dividing the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Hades, the realm of the dead, part three. Uh, the great mountain of darkness is our subtitle. And Jesus went to the mountain of the devil. And there he said to Peter, the gates of Hades are not going to prevail against the church. And then six days later, Jesus is transfigured in that very same mountain, the mountain of the devil. He was transfigured and a voice came and said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I hope that you've been blessed. I hope that you are excited. 
Amen. I am, and uh, I believe that the Lord is doing wonderful things with His body, with His children. Amen. Some of you are in third grade. Some of you are in fifth. Some of you are in tenth. Some of you maybe already graduated from a spiritual high school, you know. But it doesn't matter where you are. One thing I've learned from the Holy Spirit is no matter what a preacher preaches on, God will make sure through the power of His Holy Spirit that He ministers to all types of spiritual understandings and levels. Hallelujah. Amen. That's, that's how wonderful our God is. Amen. Well, we're going to close. Uh, let me pray first for the word and then we'll have a closing prayer. Father, I thank you for this wonderful word and I bless God's people. I decree that uh, these three teachings are going to be a blessing to your people. I believe uh, that they will uh, understand, that they will perceive, they will comprehend the depthness of your word. I decree in the name of Jesus that the seed of God that has been sown in people's lives, all Facebook friends and Kingdom Faith and Kingdom Faith World Evangelism members, that the seed that's been sown will produce fruit in the name of Jesus. We bless the seed, which is the word of God. We bless it in the name of Yeshua. And God's people said, Amen. And amen. Well, we're going to leave you, but uh, we are uh, reminding our first-time viewers that uh, uh, for any offering, any offering at all, uh, I will send you these two books, and I will pay the postage. Uh, my book on the spiritual realm, Understanding the Spiritual Realm, and my first book, The Old Man Versus the New Man. Amen. This helps you to overcome sin, and that this helps you to understand the spiritual realm and how things work in the spirit. Amen. I will send you these two books for any uh, offering that you send me. Now, this is for first time givers. Amen. First time givers. Uh, so just send me an offering and send me your e uh, email me your address and I will send them to you. And let me just say this. You don't have to worry about Bishop, you know, sending you a, an email three months from now asking you for money. I don't work that way. This ministry does not work that way. I'm not going to bother you or anything. Amen. So it's not like a catch. I'm not throwing the, you know, the hook out there with the bait so that I can reel you in. No, this is to bless you. Amen. Any offering, uh, any amount offering uh, for uh, these two books, uh, first time givers, I will send them to you. Just make sure that you email me uh, your address and I will send them to you as soon as possible. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. I'm just excited. And I hope you're excited also. Amen. I feel the victory of the Lord. I know that when you start thinking in the natural, you know, things don't make sense. You know, but we're not of a natural kingdom. We are of a spiritual kingdom. Amen. And so I know that uh, you, you know, you judge things in the natural. You go, wait a minute. You know, nothing's moving. Everything's the same. Oh, but in the spiritual. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel the victory of the Lord for this church, for our ministry, for you and your children, children's children, and for your ministries. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I bless your people. I ask that you keep them. I ask that you bless them. I ask that you protect them. I ask that you show your favor on them. And I ask in the name of Jesus that you give every person that is listening to me right now and will listen later through uh, through uh, online, I pray that you fill them with your supernatural, abundant peace that surpasses all understanding. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. Love you guys. We'll see you Sunday at 10 o'clock. Physical live services in the sanctuary. Peace.